here today with Kevin Radnauer, and he is the owner and chef of Kitchen on Main, located in the Main Street Bourbon and Ale House. So Kevin, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. What do you like best about being a owner of a restaurant in LaGrange? Personally, I just like seeing like what kind of people are out here, what they'll order, and being the owner, I essentially have the creativity to do almost whatever I want. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but I still get to try new things that I've never done before and well, just see how they sell. It's wonderful. And Kevin, how have you broadened your menu since you've become owner of Kitchen on Main? I've added some new pizzas. Uh, originally we started off with uh, just these little like slider type burgers, which I eventually developed into the full size burger. Uh, a few new sandwiches, a few new salads, and there's almost a new dinner special every night. And then every weekend my sous chef does a new dessert special. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, we have your specials out today. Mm -hmm. Can you describe those for us, please? Uh, this over here is a white chicken chili. I just topped with some fresh tomatoes and parsley with a piece of jalapeno cheddar cornbread, all made in-house. And then over here we have uh, what my sous chef is calling a black and blue cobbler. It is a blackberry and blueberry cobbler. So where do you find your inspiration for your food? <laughs> Depends really, because there are some things I'll make at home that I'll be like, oh, I could probably sell this at the O house. And then sometimes I'll just be walking through a car and go, you know what, I'm just going to grab this and this and this and just artist. throw something together. Yes, very much an artist. And so far it's worked out each time. That's wonderful. So is there anything else that you would like to encourage people to find out about the Main Street Bourbon House? I know a lot of people will plug social media and I'm about to do that, but we do try to post our specials on Facebook every day sometime around 4 or 4.30. So just follow us on Facebook and see what the special is that night. And your Facebook page is? Main Street Bourbon and Outhouse. Wonderful. Thank you again for joining us. You're welcome. Michelle and I are here with Linda Clemens. She and her husband Tom own the Main Street Bourbon and Ale House. So Linda, Thank you for joining us. But most of all, I just want to ask you, why is the Main Street Bourbon Ale House the place to be? Uh, because we have a lot to offer with the uh, with our good food, and we have 70 bourbons that we offer, <laughs> and we have a lot of families that come in that can bring their children and sit on the decks and on the patio and enjoy uh, our good, you know, our atmosphere and and good food. And Linda, what made you open your business here in LaGrange? Well, I think there was a need for it here because um, we had the building and we had a restaurant here 12 years ago and then Tom and I decided, you know, what the heck, <laughs> we'll just do it again. And uh, we've loved every, every minute of it. We, we really have enjoyed um, just everybody and people that work for us and we've got a great crew and we have great food from Kevin and it's just been really wonderful. It's great. You, all, you and Tom both have been so active in the community. We do appreciate that. You, you've given us a place to come and gather, but also you show the love for the, the town too. So we thank you for that. Thank you. Now, the bourbon isn't the only spirits you have around here, are there? No. Are you talking about the ghost? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We have a haunted place. We have uh, a couple of ghosts in here. Uh, I've never experienced it, but other people have. So uh, we're looking forward to the ghost tours uh, in the fall. So. Um, You'll have to come by and we'll be on the ghost tour and you can come in and have dinner and drinks and uh, we would love to see you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you, you have to join us here on the patio. There's not a better spot in LaGrange. So again, thank you, Linda. Thank you, Michelle.
Thank you have a wonderful time. We will Thank see you. you here at Main Street Bourbon Ale House soon. Barbara, can you tell us a little bit about the ghost tours? I would love to. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me uh, come by here, especially in this place that is also so very haunted. The ghost tours began 14 years ago, so this is uh, a long time for us to develop new stories in addition to the history and the stories that we originally started with. This is my 12th year doing the ghost tour, so I have a lot of personal experiences that have happened uh, during the tours. So, so what is what was your most um, spine tingling experience? My most spine tingling would have to be the most recent uh, experience that I've had, and uh, it involves this place, the Main Street Bourbon and Ale House which does seem to be one of our most active locations. My first experience was, I believe now, three years ago. Uh, I was able to spend some time alone in here one night to let the tours come in while uh, Tom Clemens was renovating this place uh, to get it ready for the alehouse. And there's a theory that it seems to be that when there's some type of an upheaval, such as a renovation, any entities, energy, spirits, ghosts, whatever you want to call them, become more active during that time. And that seems to be what's going on here. However, it's still active, even though the renovations are, are finished and all complete. Uh, my experience was I was in here by myself waiting to let a ghost tour in since Tom couldn't be here. And I was pretty excited about being here because I'd never been in here alone. So I got here way early. I was very early. And I'm sitting there and Tom had told me before I came, he said, I will have the lights dimmed for you and I'll have the fireplace going because it was chilly that night. So I get in, the fireplace wasn't lit. So I thought, well, and I didn't want to try to light it myself. So I didn't. Then, uh, after a while, I started to get a little, just a little bit bored waiting for the uh, tours to get here, so I thought, maybe I'll just see if I can stir something up. So, I said, I called the name of who we believe to be the entity, Annie Wheeler, and I said, Annie Wheeler, are you here? No response whatsoever. So I thought, so much for that. A little bit later, I had another idea. I had a binder with the uh, photograph of her son. And this is quite a long story that I'm not going to go in here. You'll have to come on a ghost tour to hear the whole story. Mm -hmm. However, her uh, son Gilbert uh, shot her and killed her in 1917. And Gilbert is also believed to haunt this mm -hmm. location. So I walked over to the binder that I had on the bar and I opened it up to a photograph from the newspaper in 1917 of Gilbert. And I said, Annie, is this your son Gilly? And as soon as I said that, all of the lights went completely dim. So I thought, whoa, this is that's quite an experience. So I looked around and saw two rheostats on the wall. I went over and I had to physically turn one, it was the t type that you dial, I had to turn the dial, not on just one rheostat, but both rheostats, and then the lights went back down to dim. Then uh, a little bit later I heard the ghost tour coming up the street, so I just said, kind of cocky, I go, well, they're here, and as soon as I said that, the lights again all went completely bright. So again, I had to go over and turn down both of the rheostats to get the lights back to the, the dim spookiness, as if we needed it. So <laughs> um, that was that night. And then the next weekend, I had a tour of my own. So I came in and stood in the center of the bar and all the tour 
uh, people on the tour were outside of the bar and I'm telling the stories and the whole time I'm talking the lights are flickering so I asked Tom Clemens who was standing behind me uh, what did you do to the lights and he said we didn't do anything to the lights and I left with the tour with the lights flickering and as I left I got a text on my phone but of course I didn't check it while I'm on the tour and after I uh, finished the tour I looked to see what the text was and it was from Tom and he said as you were coming up the sidewalk with the tour the lights began to flicker when you came inside they intensified which about 20 people could testify to and then after you uh, left with the group uh, it stopped so that is uh, my most recent experience other than about a month ago there was another group that did a paranormal investigation here in the alehouse and they got some EVPs which if you're not familiar that's an electronic voice phenomenon and uh, there are actually uh, voices that answered questions so if you want to know more about that you probably want to come on a ghost tour. What impact has our most famous ghost had on LaGrange? This is the way I like to look at it. I like to think uh, one of the spirits that we talk about is the very first mayor of LaGrange, uh, Carlos McDowell. Yes. And uh, Carlos and his family owned the uh, McDowell Pharmacy, which that building is now where the Oldham County Arts Association has the Gallery 104, another very haunted location. And I like to think that he did good things while he was the mayor and during his short life. And in doing that, and in the fact that we now tell stories about him, and this is our fundraiser for the Main Street program, and the money all goes to our facade grants, which help with the historic buildings. So I like to think that these, these people from the past are still helping us in the exactly. present uh, just because we tell their story. And I'm getting cold chills mm -hmm. just thinking about it. Okay, you did mention that the facade program is funded by the tours. Mm -hmm. What other impact as far as is it is there another economic impact for the tours to be? I believe so. We um, part of uh, what we do is we we go all around town. We do go inside some locations. We're fortunate that uh, we're very authentic. We don't make anything up. We do all of the historical research and almost any building on Main Street if they're honest will tell mm. you about odd and strange things that have happened inside of their locations. So I think the fact that we actually do go inside locations, uh, that the authenticity of our tours actually brings people here because it does set us aside yeah. or apart from maybe some other tours. And I think just bringing people to town and the exposure to the businesses, I do believe it has a definite economic impact. Yes. Okay, so the tours are going to start in September. Mm -hmm. What is our big kickoff? Well, we have the ghost stories on the square, and this will be the sixth year that we've done the ghost stories. We have professional, nationally acclaimed storytellers. Mm -hmm. This year we have coming back Roberta Simpson Brown, who is the queen of the cold-blooded tales, and she truly is. We have Bill Watson, and we also have a, a new storyteller this year who's also nationally acclaimed, Cynthia Shangaris. So I'm very excited about this year's ghost stories. You can, uh, it's free to the public. You can bring a chair, you can bring the family, you can bring a cooler. We're going to have it on the courthouse lawn on Friday night, September the 9th. You can um, come It'll start at 7.30. We like to wait till it gets as close to dark as possible. In, in September, it, it's you know still light pretty late. So we want you to be um, uh, nice and, and uh, a spooky atmosphere. It's also very kid-friendly. So we try to have maybe a little more tame uh, stories earlier on, and then they get scarier as the night progresses. So come join us. It's a fun time. It's free. 
uh, professional, uh, nationally acclaimed storytellers. So it's a good deal. It's a good way to chill out on a hot night. Yes. Okay, so they can sign up for the ghost tours on? On our website, which is spiritsoflagrange.com. You can go online, make your payment there. Most questions that you might have will be answered on the website. But if you have a question that's not answered there, feel free to call our spirit line, which is area code 502-291-1766. And as always, thank, thank you, you for, for watching. watching.